In this video, we're going to start the CUDA software, Infinite Geometry, Free Worksheet, Parallel Lines in the Coordinate Plane. I'll leave a link in the description below so you know how to access this worksheet. Our directions in this part of the worksheet are to find the slope of each line. Now slope we know is rise over run. So rise over run is simply the amount we change vertically over the amount we're changing horizontally. So if we were to have points x1, y1, and x2, y2, our rise would be the difference in those y coordinates, y2 minus y1, and the run would be the difference in the x coordinates, x2 minus x1. And this is equal to the slope, which is sometimes written as m. So first, let's look at rise over run. We know that rise over run is the change in the vertical direction over the change in the horizontal direction. So from this point, we're going down five steps or five units. So this is going to be negative five. So that's negative five since we're going down in the vertical direction and then we're moving over two to the right in the positive x direction. So that's going to be over a positive two since 2 was our run. So negative 5 was our rise and 2 was our run. So our answer number 1 is negative 5 halves. However, let me go ahead and show you how to utilize the slope formula with points. That way you can see we get the same answer. So if we're counting by 1's, 1, 2, 3, 4, so this is negative 4, positive 1. And this point down here is going to be a negative 2, negative 4. I'm going to plug in my y values in my numerator. So I'm going to pick a y2 and a y1, an x2 and an x1. So for negative 4, 1, let's make this x1, y1. And negative 2, negative 4 will be x2, y2. So now y2 minus y1 will be negative 4 minus 1. So I'll have negative 4 minus 1, and that's all over x2 minus x1, which will be negative 2 minus a negative 4. Negative 4 minus 1 gives us negative 5, divided by, or all over, negative 2 minus a negative 4 is negative 2 plus a positive 4, which will be a positive 2. So negative 5 halves is indeed our answer in number 1. Moving on to number two, let's do rise over run. So we're going to count in order to solve for number two. Slope is equal to rise over run. So let's look at our rise. Starting at this point, in order to get to this next point, we're going to go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's a positive seven since we went up for our rise. And then we're going to the right one. So that's a positive 1 since we're moving to the right in the x direction. 7 over 1 is equal to 7. So 7 is our answer in number 2. Let's say we started at this point. Then for our rise over run, we would move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 down. So that would be negative 7. And then we'd move to the left. 1, so that would be a negative 1. And negative 7 divided by negative 1 is a positive 7. So you can see that no matter which point you start at, when you calculate rise over run or slope, you will get the same answer. In number 3, let's use our formula. Our formula, remember, is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So here will be x1, y1, which is negative 1, positive 4. And here is x2, y2, which is positive 3, 0. y2 is 0, minus y1 is 4, and that's divided by x2, which is 3, minus x1, which is negative 1. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. 3 minus a negative 1 is the same as 3 plus 1, which will be positive 4. And a negative 4 divided by a positive 4 is going to be a negative 1. So negative 1 is our solution in number 3. 
For number four, let's use rise over run again. Starting at this point, we're going up one, two, three, four. So our rise is four and our run, we're not moving at all in the horizontal direction. Therefore our run is zero. And we know for a fact that we cannot divide by zero. Dividing by zero will result in an undefined slope. So the slope in number four is undefined. So just remember, whenever you have a vertical line, so in other words, a line parallel to the y-axis, the slope is undefined. And number five, let's go ahead and use our formula. So I'll start here with x1, y1. That's going to be negative four, negative four. And x2, y2 is going to be negative one, positive two. So for my formula, y2 minus y1 will be two minus negative four. And I'm dividing that by x2 minus x1, which is negative one minus negative four. And that is equal to the slope. So two minus a negative four is the same as two plus a positive four, so that's going to be six. And we're dividing six by negative one minus a negative four, which is the same as negative one plus a positive four, which will result in a positive three. Six divided by three is a positive two. So our slope is two. Also note, if we have a slope of two, essentially we have a rise of two over a run of one, since that's equivalent to two. So you can see that if we go up two and over one, we will have another point on our line. So let's go up two, over one, here's another point on our line. Up two, over one, there was a point that was already marked. Up two, over one, here's another point. So you can see that our slope is useful in locating points along the line. Let's look at number six. Now in number four, we had a vertical line and a vertical line was undefined. Horizontal lines are also special. Let's look at the rise over the run. For a horizontal line, our change in our vertical direction is zero. We're not moving any up or down to get from one point to the next. So our rise is zero over our run, which we have one, two, three, four, five. However, we know that when we divide zero by any number, we get zero. So a horizontal line always has a slope of zero. So as long as it's parallel to the x-axis, that slope will be zero. So vertical lines have an undefined slope, horizontal lines have a slope of zero. And number seven, we're still finding the slope. However, now we're given an equation. And we can see that the equation is in the form of y equals mx plus b. Where we know from defining slope, that slope is going to be m. So here's our y, and that's equal to m x plus b, where b is a negative four. So for number seven, our slope is negative one third. Let's look at number eight. And number eight, again, we're in the form of y equals mx plus b. So y equals two x, where two is equal to m plus b, so plus a negative two. Two is our slope in number eight. And number nine, x is equal to negative one. And when x equals negative one, that means no matter what the value of y is, x will always be negative one. So y could be six, three, zero, negative three, negative six, and so on but x will never change. So you can see that we're going to have a vertical line, and we know that if we have a vertical line, the slope is undefined. So for number nine, our slope is indeed undefined. In number 10, we have slope intercept form, where y equals m times x plus b. Instead of subtracting three, we can think of this as adding a negative three. y equals m times x plus b, where m is our slope, 
And in this case, m takes on the value of 3 halves. So our slope in number 10 is 3 halves. And number 11, y equals mx plus b, y equals negative 7 fifths x minus 3, which you can think of as plus negative 3, but our m is negative 7 fifths, so our slope for number 11 is negative 7 fifths. And number 12, y equals mx plus b, y equals negative 5 fourths x plus b, or plus a negative 2, so slope equals negative 5 fourths. And I'll go ahead and stop the video here. In the next video, we'll go over numbers 13 through 26, finishing out this worksheet. However, before you continue on to the next video, please remember to give me a thumbs up for this video and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Also, if you're confused on slope-intercept form at all, go to my tutorial section where I go more in-depth on the different parts of slope-intercept form.